Okay, I guess we can start. So, uh, to begin with, uh, I'm Nino, uh, engineering manager in Microsoft, uh, working as a part of MAPS data team. Uh, specifically, my team is uh, working on UGC data, uh, and one of the major efforts, uh, it's a smaller team, <laughs> team than you think, probably, but one of the major efforts of my team is actually building Map Builder. Uh, Map Builder, uh, let me just see how many of you know what Map Builder is or heard about it. So, not a large number of people. Uh, but of those of you who do know, uh, how many of you heard about it in positive context? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Kinda expected. Um, anyway, um, I'm here to mostly demystify some things and, and point out to why we are doing this. So what is my builder for those who don't know? Um, uh, first and foremost, uh, what is observed on the surface, it's a web-based editor uh, for OSM, which is built on top of the ID editor, or at least at the beginning, it was mostly ID editor with some wrapping, then we kind of forked at some point, we just had to, uh, and then started customizing more and more again. Uh, but besides this, um, there are important building blocks within Map Builder that mostly comes from the principles of why we are doing this and how we want to actually position the product, what we want to learn from this experiment we call Map Builder. And finally, it's a user centric application, so it's not a map centric application. Uh, the goal is to get map data, but even more important thing is to actually try to get users who will contribute to, to maps. Okay, so why? Um, let me try to tell you a story, not map-related one. Uh, so when I was a kid, uh, I wanted to make a toy for me. Not because there, there were no toys, but because uh, they were not accessible today and because I wanted to experiment. So I got this idea to try to build the submarine toy. And I took my old uh, remotely operated car, took it apart, took away the, the literal electric, electrical engine, then um, took a propeller from some broken chopper, tried to fit everything into some plastic toy that <laughs> was sitting around, tried to make this as seal-proof as possible, and hoped to like just get the batteries, hardwired everything. I was like really young <laughs> and hoped to, to actually get it going in the bathtub. It failed miserably, <laughs> but they had a really good half a day of playing. Um, and uh, at the end, learned a lot that I will probably need more of mechanical engineering knowledge in order to really stop leaking or uh, the, the entire trick, uh, thing, not to go just a brick down to the bathtub. Well, um, nowadays, uh, for my kid, if she wants a, uh, a submarine toy, I'll probably just get one from the Amazon from for twenty seven ninety nine. It does everything I wanted my submarine to do. You have remote control to operate it, and you can even turn left and right. So. The toy exists, but the fun is kind of not there. Like she, she can play for, uh, with it for 10 minutes and then move along to different things. So why is this relevant from the perspective of OpenStreetMap? So OpenStreetMap started back in some days when I was kind of aware this project exists. I was not sure what it is about. Uh, but it was really built and I learned this along the way, it was built by the people for themselves. So people used to build stuff that they want to consume. Today we are, I would say, mostly consume-heavy society. The culture has shifted. Um, so we live in, consume, uh, in consumer culture and uh, digital first world. Um, and in this world, um, 
People don't really want to build things. They're no longer kids trying to build their own toy. They're just tr trying to buy one, consume, and move along. Uh, of course, there are still a lot of enthusiasts, and that's why we have conferences like this one, and the OSM community is strong and healthy. Uh, but we should envision also the world like 10 or 15 years from, from now. Is this sustainable? Is the OSM growth sustainable? So what we know is that uh, today OSM products are mostly used through some proxies, right? So there, there is comparison like Microsoft um, or some other um, data heavy invested uh, company who actually tries to crunch the data to produce a product and offer this product to their end users. But these end users are not aware where this data is coming from. So the question is, is there a way to get these eyes that we have, these billions of eyes potentially, to somehow get us signals, observations about the world, or maybe even become the next kid who will play around with OSM and try to uh, make it long-term sustainable. So that's why MapBuilder as experiment was in actually started. <coughs> and finally, um, the answer to the poll. Uh, I saw seven answers which are kind of close, one in 1,000, one in 5,000. Um, and the reason is exactly because uh, why, why I set up this logarithmic scale is because uh, I imagine this is quite individual thing. Because for <laughs> the one person who actually wants to contribute, it's 100% chance. For the person who doesn't want to contribute, it's a 0% chance. So you're answering from your own probably internal bias. And this is experiment that we ran for two and a half years, and these numbers um, are for the desktop services of Bing Maps and our conversion rate from the Bing Maps users to actually uh, Bing Maps, or in this case, OSM contributors. Now back to these building blocks that I mentioned. So as I said, uh, the web app is just a surface. So in order to build such a product, uh, we had had to, we had to set some kind of foundation, some kind of guidelines and principles that we want to follow. Um, and these, of course, start with discoverability. Uh, but then something which is not common with other OSM editors today, and that's what, like built for simplicity, so for anyone to use, really, um, for to educate rather than punish mistakes. Uh, also to validate because uh, the uh, number of uh, bad edits is actually quite high. Can you try to guess how many bad edits we receive in percentage, like one to 100? Anyone? That's quite close, about 55%. And at the same time, uh, we need to deal with all uh, compliance, scalability issues. We do want to try to engage and entertain our users uh, and uh, with this uh, back and forth between product and the, the data source, it's really a story about inter interoperability. Um, and ultimately, we want this experience to be rewarding for our users. So we want our users to love what they do. Not necessarily map, build as a product, but m mapping as a habit. So starting with discoverability, this is what currently exists. Um, it's, it's it was kind of enough for this stage of experiment. Uh, so it's a edit maps button, and every now and then you can get the banner to remind you if you, in the case you haven't seen it, you can easily dismiss. And fast forward to simplicity. So first and foremost, no tags. Uh, our users don't know what the tagging schema is. Uh, we handle this simplicity for them. Uh, simple tools meaning they're thinking in the context of natural 
entities. So house is not uh, uh, an area with some tags. House is just a house. Uh, road is just a road, right? It's not a line string. Uh, our types are visual. Um, it's kind of blurry here, but the roads, road types are actually illustrated. They have some names uh, and explanations, but it's really about having also a visual clue to minimize the mistake, right? Um, the details we can add are optional, and it also kind of blend in. So you can add a house, but you can also add the address, like street name, or if you know the street number, and so on, or, or the name of the building, if this is a building, right? Uh, but it's all optional, and we handle the complexity of translating this into the, the, the OSM scheme. And this complexity is unveiled gradually uh, so that uh, every user goes as long as they want. Um, and we found that this approach actually prevents mistakes. So it kind of fences users. It's not a general purpose editor, um, but it's kind of um, making more streamlined approach. Um, then education. This is really important. Um, so uh, why my edits cannot be accepted? Uh, we even started sending messages to users um, about this. Then we have really detailed tooltip guidelines. We have visual guides uh, uh, that kind of explain uh, also in text and image what the user is supposed to do. Um, and as I said, visual types. Uh, and usually, uh, some users, uh, the motivation for like trying to map is really not clear. Some users just want to add their own house or business, right, uh, or, or change the name of the street. Uh, some of them just really want to explore. So we are trying to engage them with some predefined tasks similar to map roulette concept. <coughs> uh, retention is important because we want to. Uh, uh, make sure that we can develop the user from the one-time contributor to second-time contributor, and third, and fifth, and uh, eventually develop habits. So that's what we are referring internally to as developing power users. We are not still there yet. Um, and these are some of the uh, features that we are currently having to support this idea. As I said, interoperability, interoperability. This comes um, at the high development costs. Um, it's quite complex. Uh, but we need to be integrated with the product. You cannot delight users if you're pulling them for, from their product if they are not aware that they're actually owning something, making some changes. So we are trying to delight them uh, with letting them know how they change to the OSM, actually propagated all the way through the Bing Maps regardless is if it is through overture or through or directly uh, and and uh, finally uh, how many people actually found that change usable so it's kind of a reminding on a stake right also uh, uh, we do have uh, some uh, part to integrate with the OSM itself uh, as you may know it's not easy to integrate messaging or comments in a in a general map editor, where map builder does that. And soon it will do, I hope so, solve the problem for all the editors out there. So rewarding exper experience, it's kind of self-explanatory. Uh, besides uh, rewards itself, um, the rewards may come from the recognition from the community. Um, and of course, as I mentioned, validation is really important. Uh, we have this multi-level validation with ultimately the last fans being manual curation by, by our editors. Um, and this is how this can look like um, in, in for every user out there. So they're kind of tracking uh, their ch change in status. Um, the scalability and compliance, as I said, are kept in relatively high standards. Okay, so this is probably the thing, the one thing that you know. <laughs> um, the experiment uh, were, was running on different kind of 
uh, workarounds, right? So uh, I I in order to make all of this possible, we f first tried to just shovel everything under one proxy account. That didn't go well, so that account was blocked. We found, uh, we found the ultimate account workaround, which is sort of not preferred way to do it. Um, and finally, uh, after having deeper discussions of what we can do and helping actually the uh, developing the necessary part of the infrastructure on the OSM website, we uh, landed to something which we call seamless sign-on. You probably notice that there is a different way how you sign in the OSM website, and um, it, it can actually make um, the process uh, much more streamlined. This is just a short demo on how this exists. Today, I pre-recorded it because it's short talk. After drawing, click save, essentially just authorizing. And the thing here is that this is not the front end only app. It does actually authenticate the service. So it, it authenticates the service on the back end uh, to go and talk to ISM. So it, it allows um, pre submit moderation. Um, it's, uh, it also uh, supports in app comments and messaging and globally available in all the Bing languages and uh, also have a responsive design. And as they <laughs> say in the this movie commercials <laughs> in your theaters, summer <laughs> 2024. <laughs> okay, so briefly down the road, um, after this huge release I is done and we sunset the ultimate account approach and hopefully all of you who used to hate my builder start loving uh, will probably focus on further growing uh, our users and hand holding them to essentially become more of a like uh, uh, better edu educated mappers so that they know what they're doing that they don't need this hand holding anymore and uh, we will probably focus on hyper local knowledge because this seems as something that even with the digital age, um, we don't really have a good answer to. So something that you just simply cannot do armchair. I think like expression uh, or feeling that you had when visited PlaySex. Th there's no way an AI today or in probably next five plus years that can do so. Okay, thank you. Um, I'll be probably on time or bit over uh, if you have any questions thanks a lot